Good afternoon, and thanks to everyone for joining our OER course walkthrough for Introduction to Psychology. This webinar is actually fourth in a series running all during Back to School Week, designed to walk VCCS, faculty and staff, through some of Lumen's most frequently requested OER courses. My name is Elizabeth Shonigan. I'm your Director of Teaching and Learning with Lumen. And then we're also joined today by the course design lead for the social sciences, Wendy King. And Wendy's going to be walking us through an OER intro psych course in Blackboard, as well as talk more about some of the courses available in the social sciences for you to adopt. So thanks, Wendy, for being here today. And also a quick thanks to VCCS for helping us get these webinars up and rolling, and to you as well for being here. So we are going to record this session. So if you have any questions, comments, asking that you save those, or go ahead and throw them in the chat, and we'll leave plenty of time at the end for Q&A and conversation. Before I introduce Wendy to uh, dive further into psychology, let me first provide some context on why we're here and about why open educational resources matter. So things like cost savings, day one access, and the ability for you as the faculty member to control the content in terms of being able to edit it, to keep it, freely share and distribute it, those are no-brainers. And those are just a few reasons to choose OER, right? So we also now know that effectively delivered open material also have been proven to improve student learning outcomes. So if you're interested to learn more about that or view some of the research behind some of the more current efforts, visit lumenlearning.com. So suffice it to say, choosing OER is a decision that's fully in your control as a faculty member. And when you choose OER, you're directly affecting student issues related to affordability, success, and access. And frankly, that's pretty empowering. So we at Lumen, we've partnered with VCCS to help ease this transition to OER. Our job is to curate the highest quality open content deliver it through a secure platform that integrates right inside your Blackboard and with your Blackboard Grade Center, and then to help you be successful by providing course design, implementation, and other types of ongoing support while you're using OER in your class. So that's part of my role. My background is in ed tech and instructional design. I am your faculty go-to, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity to work with you. As you may know, BCCS faculty can adopt any of the three OER course types you see here, Candela, Waymaker, which we'll be taking a closer look at today, and OM, the Open Math Solution. So each of these course types provides a number of options for different course areas. And at the end of the presentation, we'll make sure to go through how you can get your own copies ready to go right in Blackboard for use this fall and beyond. I want to take just a second to briefly explain what each of these course types entails and then introduce Wendy for the deeper dive into Waymaker for Psychology. Lumen's Candela courses are what most VCCS faculty are familiar with. These OER courses are a great starting point when you're just looking for a basic e-text replacement with some faculty resources like quiz banks, PowerPoints, and other assignments. So again, because all of the content here is openly licensed, you as the faculty member have full freedom to edit it, to mix it, keep it, reuse it, and distribute it as you see fit. Lumen's OWN, or Online Homework Manager, is a math-geared solution that you'll find very similar to the systems provided by major publishers. And OWN actually grew from the need for a more reliable and secure enterprise-level system based on the open solution MyOpenMath, which Lumen continues to maintain alongside the MyOpenMath author David Lipman. Inside the 12 courses currently curated by Lumen, you'll find an e-text, algorithmically driven practice problems, videos, assessment, pretty much all the types of instructional content you would expect from a full solution. And of course, faculty that are using OM also benefit from Lumen's support and the reliability and accessibility you'd expect from an enterprise system. So you'll also see some OM homework problems embedded in some of the more quantitatively driven science courses like chemistry or even in the social sciences like economics. You can learn more about OM at ohm.lumenlearning.com. So now to what we're here for today, Waymaker. Lumen's Waymaker courses take that OER content in Candela to the next level by layering in a personalized learning approach and some really cool faculty messaging tools that we'll show you today. These tools include totally customizable automated messages that are going to help you not only identify who's struggling and reach out to those students, but also to reward the ones that are really working hard and being successful in your course. And that's what we found makes all the difference. 
here to walk us through Waymaker and the content and resources for intro psych, like I mentioned, is Lumen's social science course design lead, Wendy King. So Wendy's been with Lumen for over two years and came to Lumen from a career in education where she taught high school social studies in both face-to-face -face and online environments, which is where she first came to learn about OER. She's written and taught several OER-based classes, and at Lumen here, her primary focus is working with subject matter experts across the nation to develop and support social science courses, including psychology and sociology. And frankly, she's one of my main go-tos when I want to know what the latest and greatest is for OER in these areas. So, Wendy, really appreciate your being here. And without further ado, I will pass the floor over to you. All right, I'll stop sharing my screen and pass it to you. Excellent, can you hear me now? Yep, sounds great. Fabulous, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, I am happy to take you through this. Sorry, um, figuring out the screen share here. Okay, I have just logged into our instance of Wavemaker Psychology inside of the Blackboard instance, and you'll notice our course sites, it may look a little bit different, um, but this is a generic view within Blackboard. And I'll show you some of the highlighted features. So this, this course, first of all, it differs from other courses you might find today in that it is organized around the most recent recommendations from the American Psychological Association, so the APA. And they've recommended we organize the course now around the five pillars of psychology. So that's the biological, developmental, then social and personality psychology, and then lastly, mental and physical health. And so we've organized and grouped all of the content modules around those themes. Um, so we've, we're starting with the foundations and then the research, of course. But in that biological domain, we encourage instructors to, to choose, and faculty to choose um, maybe one, two, maybe all of the concepts within that domain, but it's not necessary. In fact, not even encouraged to teach all of that. This gives you a lot of uh, customization options and ability to personalize to, to meet your needs and to really hone in on those areas of interest for you and, and your students. And so, for example, within the, um, the, another domain would be the developmental domain. Um, and so you could hone in and teach about learning or lifespan development, but you don't necessarily need to teach on both of those. And because of that custom customization option, you'll notice that we've got the course assignments listed here. I'll go ahead and open that. And you'll see that they're listed um, and just a long list of all the assignments. So you can peek through all of them at the same time and you can review them and you can move them quite easily into those modules that you do choose to teach. So for example, this is one of my favorites. This is from Sensation and Perception. We'll go to this module in a little bit. You'll see that uh, this is a fun assignment that is an application of the Del Boeuf illusion. And we learn a little bit in the course, um, but this has students actually apply this. Um, they read a research article, um, as mentioned here, about plate size and color suggestibility. And the fun assignment has students actually imagine um, your mom, their mom is hosting a family reunion and she has limited amounts of food. And so this is having the students use the applications of this study to, to determine how much, uh, to determine what color plates should be used um, in order to prevent overeating. So that's a fun example there. And so you can easily just move those. Some have rubrics. Um, actually, most of the assignments do have rubrics, so the, the discussions uh, can be customized to fit your personal preferences there. Um, but you can easily pull these uh, or delete these or adjust these to fit your needs. So going back out of here into the course again, um, there's some introductory material there and faculty resources uh, that Elizabeth will speak to in just a little bit. I'll go ahead and dive into the content itself and show you some of our features there. So I mentioned the sensation and perception module. Again, this looks like Blackboard. What's really neat is when you get inside of the course, we work through what's called the study plan. So students will come in here to the study plan and of looks like um, 
yeah, just a different interface, so user face. So students will come into this, and you'll see that it's split into the three sections of the getting started, dive in, and then the finish strong. And it'd be always, all of the modules begin with this why it matters section. So this kind of just introduces the material and lets them know this is what we're going to be talking about and this is what we're going to be learning about um, in this module. Right after that, they can stay within the study plan and just click this next button down here. This will let me um, to go to the show what you know. This is a pretest and just kind of enable students to know what to expect and also let them gauge the areas where maybe they already have some prior knowledge or where they really need to focus their efforts when they're going through the module. So I'm just going to guess a couple answers here. Um, again, we've got some neat features on these quizzes and so this arrow is here is pointing at um, the lens in the eye and has you ask, uh, identify what that does. I'm not reading all of these now, but I'm going to click through. And once this is submitted, oh, I left a question blank. Let's try again. So once that's submitted, it gives me results and tells me, okay, I missed this, but I was correct here. So this covers the concept of vision. So maybe I do, I'm okay with the vision because I maybe I already learned about vision in my anatomy class. Um, but I really don't know much about the other senses or things like that. So uh, you can go back to the study plan and the study plan will actually populate um, to give you these uh, indicators here. And this isn't necessarily the results from the quiz I just took. This is just a demo to demonstrate how this would work for a student. And so based on those results, it will give them uh, some uh, signs here to say like, oh, look, I'm on track or, oh, this is where I was a little deficient, so I need more work in this area. Um, so diving in, this is where students will actually go to get the, the meat of the course. And so it's got introductory pages within every section. And so this is saying, welcome to sensation and perception. These are our learning. And then you can continue on. You see this top here takes you through all of the pages within this content section. So here we'd have what is sensation. We're going to read about that. And then we've got neat try it. And these are just practice questions within the text. And these are awesome for students, a wonderful way to review what they've just read in that very moment. So they can say, what is this? And let me just check it. And it'll give them feedback right away. Oh, that's not right. Oh, so I, I missed this. So what is the just notable difference again? And so then I could come up here and search and reread that, and then I could do that again. And so you'll notice that those are all over in the text as well as a glossary uh, there to review. And again, this uh, bar at the top will help you keep tabs of your learning progress and let you know like, okay, I'm gonna learn about percep perception next. And then again, oh, I should also mention that we've got a few videos embedded in here. In fact, we have quite a bit. This course has over uh, 120 um, different videos enhancements included in the course. So um, short things like this example that many are familiar with, the selective attention test um, and other uh, review types of videos and lots of things to maintain student interest. Again, here's a crash course video and this is an optional thing that students could use to, you, to watch as a review for this content. And so then once you're finished with that section, you would come up, um, so you can also click next at the bottom of the page. Let's see, next. And then that will take me to the self-check. And so this is just covering this section on sensation and perception. And I can, again, I'm gonna guess for the purposes of this demo, uh, but I can do just a guess or feeling very sure and then it says, oh, I need some work. I got all three wrong. And so I can take this again, uh, or I can also go back to the study plan. And the study plan, after taking that quiz, will repopulate to give me um, more data. So if I had done well on this, it would no longer say that I need work in this area. Um, and it would uh, change this to, uh, for this section here of why does this need work? It would let me know that it doesn't actually need work because I've done well on that. Okay, so a few other neat features in this course. Um, it is based off of OpenStack psychology, but it's been significantly enhanced, as you saw with a few videos and interactive pieces. And one of my favorite additions are some 
psychology in real life examples, and we're going to pop down to this under perception here. These were created by Pat Carroll from the University of Texas, Austin, and we've been working with him to really bring psychological concepts uh, back, uh, back to students in a form that's interesting and relevant and applicable, and we especially want them to get more comfortable reading about studies and examples. So I'll take you to this first page on illusions. This is something written again by Pat Carroll, who just explained, the, uh, I think, one uh, commonality in a lot of introductory psych classes and courses is that you learn about sensation and perception, like here's the eye, here's the ear, this is how it works, but students sometimes don't see the connection with why are we studying this in psychology. And so we filled in those gaps here, and it explains why illusions matter. So this is all playing with our perception, and what does this mean, what are the applications of this? And we've got a few examples of it. And then what's really neat is students actually get to play with this Ebbinghaus illusion right here. And so you might be familiar with this one. This has you um, look at the two orange inner circles. And we're going to try to match this inner circle to match the same size of that circle on the right here. So it's going to have me adjust this until I think it's right. I've done this a lot, so I'm usually pretty good. We'll see. Oh, I was a little shy. And that would be consistent with as you probably know, the results of this study would say that these surrounding large circles make you believe um, that this is larger and so these are smaller and so um, people have a tendency to reduce the size of this uh, second circle. So uh, what's neat on this is that we've brought this to life by tying this into research done by Jessica Witt and her research on golfing and putting performance. And so students, instead of just reading this actual research article, they're shown highlights from the article and shown examples and applications, and they even get to look. Um, so here, they're first going to guess at the independent and dependent variables in her study, so how well they did on the putting and uh, what they anticipated. And then they get to do some manipulations with the actual research. And so here we we have the, uh, if the circle is, uh, if the large circles are projected around the putting hole, and do I think that the circle drawn by the participant is going to be smaller, or do I think it'll be larger? So how will it be perceived? And so I'm going to adjust these to what I think, and then I can go to show answer, and I'll see that, oh, yes, in fact, they found this one to be smaller and this one was perceived to be larger. And so it goes on to, to step you through that and even has a video at the end of the application of that study. And so these are interspersed throughout the course. Another one of my favorites uh, is found in the learning section about latent learning. It has students actually walk through every, every step of a research study and make predictions about what's going to happen next. Um, as far as learning is concerned. Um, it's based on research by Tolman about rats. I can show that to you for just one moment. So that's uh, this is, again, another study plan. And this one has not been completed yet. It would be in other types of learning, latent learning. Um, this is where we first learn about it and the rats study. And then if we go to the next page, they get an application of this. And so students get to understand how the experiment was designed, identify independent and dependent variables, and then actually try it. So on trial one, what do you think happened? And then they can check and uh, see their answers there. And then they can see this is actual the data, this is how the data is changing. What's going to happen on this trial? Oh, this is how it's changing now. How is it going to change? So you get the idea that uh, there's lots of um, hands-on kind of opportunities for students to really get into psychology instead of just learning about it. Um, so if we go back to the study plan here, uh, at the end of the section, there's a putting it together piece. And this just concludes all of the material that we've learned about in this module on learning. And this also has a, another video example. And then once we're done with that, we can go on to the quiz. And so we'll say we're ready for the quiz. And the quiz will, will 
um, pop us back out of the study plan into Blackboard so that students can uh, take the quiz and you as an instructor can get the feedback and everything is populated for them there uh, for you to see uh, inside Blackboard. And so they would just go to the quiz this way. Um, and it's still going to look like the Waymaker uh, design within Blackboard, but again, it's going to function just like a Blackboard quiz would. Uh, except students do get two attempts, and what's great about this is it's still connected to the study plan. And so after my first attempt, um, it can give me some more feedback of areas where I need to uh, review. Um, and so I could go back to review this concept on classical condi conditioning and uh, hone in on what I need to practice uh, before my second attempt. So that's basically it for the course. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have or point out any other features. Um, but I hope you'll take advantage of the opportunity to customize and really make it your own. Right. Thank you, Wendy. So bottom line, there is a lot of content inside of this Introduction to Psychology course. But uh, it's put there for a reason because so many instructors teach it in so many different ways. So this content is for you to uh, pick and choose what you like and to totally customize it to your course. What I really like about that, and thank you for showing us, Wendy, all of the different practice opportunities that are available for students. So as they're going through, it's not just the static content, but there are so many interactives. There are so many try it, self-checks, and self-assessments as they're going through. And what's really neat about that is that all of that is tying into what I'd like to show you in terms of those faculty messaging tools that I mentioned at the beginning. So the performance on the quizzes, as well as students' interactions with all of those self-checks and try -its, those are all feeding data into one of the really cool features of Waymaker, which are the faculty messaging tools. And so these, again, are automated messages that are going to help you reach out and identify not only the struggling students, but also reward the ones that are doing well. And so what you're seeing here is I went into my faculty resources and then Waymaker faculty tools. This is your faculty dashboard. And what's really prominent here is that it's not very messy. There are not a lot of data visualizations, not a lot of lists and checklists. We're keeping it very simple so you can identify and help students who are trying but struggling. And we'll talk about what that means. That means that they're really in there interacting with the content and the practice stuff, but then they're still struggling on the quizzes. And those are the ones that you really want to know about. And so let's dive in, and we'll come back to that. But I want to show you how we set up this communication and what it entails. So it's very easy. When you start the semester, you can go up to set up communication, read some basic information about it, and then there are five easy steps. First, these automated messages, you'll decide what email address would you like for it to come from, what name, how would you like the signature to look, and then when would you like to receive notifications. All this can run in the background without any of your knowledge, or maybe you want a daily digest of all the messages that go out, or maybe you want to know every time one goes out, which might be a little excessive, but hey, it's your call. So you can select that here, and then as you dive in, you will select a mastery threshold. So mastery threshold is for those quizzes, those quizzes that happen at the end of all of the modules. And these are the quizzes that show up in your Blackboard gradebook. So 80% is what we recommend as a threshold, but you might want to change that, lower it, or increase it as per your want. And this mastery threshold will be what triggers some of these automated messages. So it shows here that students who score below the mastery threshold on their first attempt will be encouraged to do targeted review and then attempt the quiz a second time. So students who score at or above the threshold won't be encouraged to attempt the quiz a second time, but of course they can because they do have, they do have two attempts. So this is where you initially set that, and then you'll put your start and your end date of your course. And then the third part is to select your message personality. We have two different types of messages. There's a coach personality and then an advisor personality. The coach personality is uh, very positive, very um, encouraging, exactly what it sounds like, like a coach. So you can see this message here. And this is just a pre-populated message. You'll be able to totally customize it on the next screen. But just to select you know, the, the tenor and the tone that you want to select for those messages before you customize them. The advisor is a little more just to the point, strictly the facts. You notice there are fewer exclamation points. 
And so depending upon your personality, you'll want to go ahead and select one of those and then go on to the next screen to customize them. So here's where you can either turn them on or off at any point in the semester. And then there are two different types of messages that go out. Study tips, and this is for when, just as I mentioned, students are trying, but they're struggling. So um, these, these quiz attempts, these students have done fewer than 25% of those practice opportunities, those formative assessments in the module before taking their first attempt, but then they're scoring low. So these messages are geared toward sharing study tips for the students. And then you can totally customize them here. And then you can see in the preview what that ends up looking like. So it will automate the student's first name. It will automate the, uh, the outcome on the quiz. So those are things that you don't have to worry about as a faculty member, but um, you can set that there. Again, there are three different messages. So there are different message types. And just so you know, these messages are sent no more than once every two weeks to any student. So on the flip side, there are these nice work messages, because everybody likes a good pat on the back. And for your students who are exceeding the mastery threshold on the quiz, these messages are going to provide some positive reinforcement. So just really short, simple messages. And we've gotten the most positive response out of these messages, because students are always used to people contacting them if they're struggling or if they've done something wrong. But when they're doing something right, it really means a lot to get that pat on the back and know that your professor is acknowledging you. So one of four different versions will be sent no more than once every two weeks to any student. So you have flip sides here. You've got the students who are not really digging into the formative assessments, not really using those self-checks, and then scoring poorly on the quiz. We'll get study tips to them. And then a little kudos and a nice work to the students who are um, exceeding that mastery threshold. So those are the automated messages. There's also a set of messages that are recommended. And these are the ones that will be sent out um, from the dashboard. And we'll look back at that again. So there are two sets of recommended messages you can customize. One is an office hours invitation. So these are for students that are really not engaging and struggling. So it says here that these students scored below the mastery threshold on their first quiz attempt despite having used at least 25 of the formative assessments. So these students are trying but having a hard time. So the first message is about office hours, suggesting here that you customize um, and insert exactly what your office hours are, you know, Monday, Wednesday. You can just totally customize this message. So that is one, one type of message. And then the other one is supplemental help. So maybe you have a tutoring center where there are regular um, tutoring sessions for introduction to psychology. You can let the student know, and you can place the links to the resources right here and customize that message too. So after you save and customize this message, when you go back to your dashboard, again, it'll show you those students that are trying but struggling. So again, a very clean dashboard here. So these students are using 25% or more of those formative assessments, those practice problems, try it, self-check, but yet they're still scoring below the threshold. So it'll show you their name. It will give you details about the content that they're struggling with, what their scores were. And from here, you can message. So it will populate those original templates that you just customized. And then you can further customize it depending upon the student and the knowledge you have about that student. So you can have the one-on-one -on -one message, or you can send those tips and resources emails. So this is a great resource for professors who have large numbers of students in their courses. It's very hard to keep on top of them, but these basic messages, the ones that are doing well, sending out some study tips to the ones that are doing poorly, and then really reaching out to the ones that are trying but still not succeeding, that is really what this Waymaker courseware was designed to affect. So we know that that faculty outreach, that student-faculty communication, it makes all the difference for the students. So that's a little bit of what makes Waymaker different. It's this mastery-based, personalized learning approach with the modules that follow that standard dive in, getting started, and then finishing strong kind of format with the pre-test and the post-test and the quiz. And then it's the faculty messaging tools. 
And so we have these not only for introduction to psychology, but we also have a Waymaker course available for intro sociology, macroeconomics, and then microeconomics as well. And so we have almost all of your general education courses available in Candela, and we're, which is that basic standard e-text format. And we're working to get them into this Waymaker format. But for now, DCCS faculty can take advantage of intro psych, intro social, macro and microeconomics, and these are in the box ready to go.